Are you tired of spending hundreds of dollars on Zapier and Make? I have a solution for you. Self-hosted N8N. N8SN is one of the most powerful tools for process automation, offering more features and flexibility compared to Zapier or Make. It has features like drag and drop workflow builder, pre-built integrations, conditional logic, no code and low code capabilities, custom JavaScript nodes, multi-step workflows, self -host 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 The best part, you can set it up on your own server and pay just a few bucks for hundreds of thousands of operations, saving you tons of money. While there are many guides on how to self-host N8N, most don't cover setting up a PostgreSQL database or adding custom JavaScript libraries to make your setup truly scalable and flexible for any task. Self-hosting might sound intimidating because it requires some terminal work, but don't worry, I've bundled all the commands into a couple of simple scripts. In just 10 minutes, you can go from zero to having a fully functional N810 setup. Don't forget to check the notes for this lesson in Notion. There I left a detailed step-by-step -step description with all commands and $200 gift for DigitalOcean hosting. Let's get started. Today we are looking at how to deploy M810 on DigitalOcean to have our inexpensive, self-hosted solution for automating business processes. To start, you need to create an account on DigitalOcean. I don't think this will be a major challenge, so let's proceed directly to creating a droplet. To do this, you need to click the Create button and select the droplet. Here we leave everything as it is. Scroll down to Marketplaces, select a marketplace, choose Docker, and then we need to select a plan. The simplest regular plan for $6 will be sufficient. Additionally, if you are deploying a solution for your client or want your solution to be scalable and secure, it is worth enabling automatic backups. They will be created every week and will cost only $1 per month. I will not include this for now. Here we will create a password. Next, click Create Droplet to create a domain. Click Create and select a domain. Here, I have already added my domains, but it can be done again. You can enter either the domain directly or with a subdomain. Let's enter it with a subdomain. I recommend placing the solution on the N8M subdomain for convenience. Here we select our project. We are currently working on the second project. Here we have no DNS records. We need our subdomain to point to the created droplet. For this, we enter the Yee symbol here. And here we select the just created droplet. This one. Let's create a record. The record has been created. Now we just need to go to the domain provider and configure the record here. I already have it set up. But let's change it to the IP that we created. Let's make sure once again that we have selected the right droplet because I have two of them. Let's go back to the projects and take a look. Here it is. It has been created. Here is its IP address. We can copy it and change the record successfully and efficiently. Done. Now we can access our self-hosted solution through this domain name. Let's return to Docker. Here, I will simply delete this domain because I have already set it up. Next, we access the droplet and proceed to the actual configuration. We cover the terminal in detail and have a comprehensive series of commands that need to be entered. To start off, we will initially begin by creating and thoroughly setting up a new user account. We create an additional user to avoid using the admin account for everything. We enter the username and then the password. We confirm the password. Here we enter information about ourselves. This can basically be skipped. We press yes, done. Next we need to add administrator rights to the user. We simply enter this command and carefully type the username, add it successfully. Next, we need to switch to this user and then proceed. We enter this command, type in the username, and as you can see, we 
previously worked under the root user, but now we are working under our created user. Next, we need to copy the Git repository to our local development environment. We are copying it. Next, it has been copied. Now we enter the folder. And we start running the scripts that are in this folder. For this, we first enter this command, and then this one, which directly runs the script. Here we are simply asked to enter a passport and a password. Next, a series of installation actions commences, which will set up a Postgres database instead of an SQLite database on the server, as well as install all the necessary JavaScript libraries. The installation will take about two to three minutes. And during the installation, we will also be asked to set a password for the SQL database. Here we are asked for a password. We will enter any password that is convenient for you and that you can remember. Next, we will also need to specify it in another set of settings. All the necessary commands have been executed and an automatic file has opened in which we need to specify our domain. By default, the subdomain for NA10 is set this way, so if you want to host it on a different subdomain, you will need to change that as well. Simply close the file with Ctrl X, then save it, and finally press Enter easily. In the following step, it is essential for us to access the Environment Settings menu. Once there, we should carefully modify and adjust several specific parameters to ensure everything is configured correctly. First, we need to add your username here, which you specified for the user, domain name. Email. I'm not entirely sure if it's necessary, but I usually do provide it. There was a working email. You also need to specify the IP address of the droplet, which we can find here, as well as the password for the database that you set up during the installation process. This is crucial for accessing the database securely and ensuring that all configurations are correct. Next, we save the changes and proceed to run another script or command to continue the setup process. Script to complete the installation process. The installation is successfully complete. Now we can try to access our The website may be unavailable for the first few minutes. It can also be inaccessible for several hours. If you are setting up the domain for the first time, we rebooted and everything was installed successfully. Accordingly, to check the status, if something is not working, you will need to enter this command. Here, you will see that if there are any errors, you will see them here. If everything is good, there will be a message indicating that all installations have been completed and you now have access. Next, you just need to enter your details, register as a user, and start using it. In addition, if you want to install an additional library for working with JS code, you can use this command, after which you will need to specify the required library or a list of libraries separated by commas. The library is installed. Next, you will need to do compose again. Yes. No, most certainly likely you will need to restart for the library to be available. In order to accomplish this, you need to run compose down. That is, we stop it and then restart. You will need to do the same thing, but with the additional command sudo docker compose pool, if you want to update the NA10 version. In NA10, you will be able to see updates in the lower left corner. And if there are any important updates, you can run these commands which will quickly update your version to the latest one. Thanks for watching. 
We're also setting up N8N because it's the perfect foundation for the AI SaaS products we're building on this channel. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the first lesson where we'll build a Telegram AI bot with memory using N8N and Supabase. See you in next video.